the last sort of derivative we're going to look at is options. Now, options are very much like futures, but they're optional, okay? So the definition you've got there is um, they're the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell a specific quantity of an item at a predetermined price and for our purposes on a fixed date. So they're very, very similar to futures, but if you think you're going to make a loss on the transaction, you walk away, you don't have to fulfill it. So if you remember when we looked at futures, um, you might buy futures now and then sell them back again in three months to complete your hedge. And you have to do that even if you're going to make a loss on those futures. For an option, you might buy the options now, but if it comes time to sell them and you realise you're going to make a loss and it's not financially advantageous for you to do that, then you just let the option lapse and you walk away from the entire transaction. So in reality, options are incredibly powerful. It means that you can make significant gains if rate moves in your favour, but it can limit your losses if you want it to. Now, the problem with this is that you are exposed to very little risk, which means the person that issues the option to you is the one that takes the risk on. So the bank is taking the risk on. You can walk away if it's financially advantageous to do so, and the bank gets lumbered with the costs. Banks don't like taking on much risk historically, so because of that, they tend to charge you an upfront premium, which is relatively expensive. So options, incredibly flexible, but kind of expensive. There's not much new terminology to learn for options. Um, there's just one thing you need to be aware of. Um, an option to buy something, or an option to lend money, so um, a deposit, so you know if you're buying debentures by um, depositing money, um, anything that's an option to buy is a call option. The way I try and remember that is it's like calling something in, you're buying it, you're bringing it into you. An option to sell something or an option to borrow money, so sell debentures, is known as a put option. So you're putting something away from you, you're selling it, you're giving it away, you're putting it somewhere else. Okay, so really, really important you remember that little bit of extra terminology when it comes to options. Now, there are a couple of types of option that you may come across. Um, there's something called over-the-counter or negotiated options, which are basically tailor-made for individual transactions. Um, they're much less common in the exam, certainly outside of um, exchange risks, they are really very uncommon. But we'll, we'll do a little example just to show you how it might work, just very briefly, um, because it'll help you get to grips with the idea of an option. Um, <clears throat> the main one you're going to come across are traded options. Now these are basically options on futures, so they're very, very similar to futures that you've already seen, just with a little bit of a twist on them. Okay, And we'll look at some, some proper examples of those in a second. So first of all, let's just do a really quick example of negotiated options. Just hopefully this will give you an idea of how almost like a commodity option would work, just so you see the, the principle of it. We'll have a look at example five in your class notes. Okay, D Limited is considering the purchase of a thousand shares in six months time. The current market value of the shares are two pound 50 each. There's a 10p per share option premium the option will give the company the option to buy the shares at a price of 190 in six months' time. Examine the cost for D-Limited if the share price in six months when it comes to make the purchase is either £2.40 a share or £1.85 a share. Well, at the moment, things look fairly good. The current market value of the shares are £2.50. Um, and the market value of the shares, sorry, the, the, the option price of the shares is £1.90. So as it stands right at this moment, you are able or you're suggesting that you will be buying £2.50 shares for only £1.90 each. Now that's sometimes referred to as the option's intrinsic value. So if you were able to exercise the option now and buy the shares for £1.90, you'd essentially be making a gain, if you like, of 60p a share. Okay, so that's the current intrinsic value of the option. 
Now, just remember, we want to buy shares. So this would be an example of a call option because we'd want an option to buy shares. Now, when we actually come to buy the shares in six months time, we've got two possible prices that they might be trading at. The first one is that the shares could be worth £2.40. So they've dropped slightly in price from their current level, but they're still pretty high. The option that we have got gives us the option to buy our shares for £1.90 each. Now clearly, if the market values £2.40, this is a pretty good deal. Um, and because of that, the option's referred to as being in the money. In other words, it makes sense for you to exercise the option. So we take the option up and buy the shares at the cheap price. Okay. So we're going to buy a thousand shares at £1.90, so we're only going to pay £1,900 for our shares, which is rather nice. Now, to be fair though, that isn't all we'll pay. Ultimately, remember what we said, this is pushing the risk onto whoever's issuing the option, because they're probably going to have to basically pay the rest of the value to the shareholders in order for us to buy those shares on the cheap. So, the bank or whoever it is we've negotiated this option with will have charged us an upfront premium. Okay, um, and we're told that that premium is 10 pence per share. So on a thousand shares, we're gonna to have to pay a hundred pounds to set the option up in the first place. So the total cost to us is 2000 pounds. However, we bought a thousand shares worth two pound 40 each. So we've actually managed to get 2,400 pounds market value of share. So we've done a pretty good job here, and we've got a net gain of £400 from this transaction. If the shares have collapsed in value, let's say the shares are worth £1.85 each. Well, in that case, the option doesn't look as good. We have an option to buy them for £1.90, but clearly we don't want to do that because that's more expensive than it would be if we just bought them on the open market. So the option is referred to as being out of the money. So we would let it lapse. Basically, because it's not financially sensible for us to use the option, we simply walk away from it. So we would just go out and buy our thousand shares at £1.85 each, just on the open market, just ignore the option completely. We don't want it. So we pay 1850 Now, it's worth just mentioning, though, that the premium is still payable. The bank hasn't had to fork out any money um, to the, the shareholders of this target company or anything like that. It's not had to make up the shortfall. But even so, regardless of whether we exercise the option or not, we always have to pay the premium up front. So that £100 will still be due, even though we didn't use the option in this case. So the total cost is £1,950. Okay. So while we have had to pay this £100 we have managed to enjoy some of the savings from the drop in share price. Okay, we managed to get these shares relatively cheap compared to where they are now. So the option is really, really useful. Basically, what the option has managed to do is it limits the maximum amount you can pay for these shares, but it allows you to enjoy most of a reduction in the share price and then still manage to buy them relatively cheaply um, if, they, if they move in that way. So they limit your upsides, but they allow you to enjoy at least some of any savings or kind of positives. Now, like we said, you're not really going to get that sort of kind of commodity option question in the exam. Um, instead, you're going to get interest rate option instead. OK, so what do we mean by interest rate options? Um, well, remember, um, the terminology, just to put it back there, option to sell is a put, option to buy is a call, very, very important. But beyond that, interest rate options are pretty much the same as interest rate futures. They work almost the same way, but you have the option as to whether you buy or sell the futures. So if the future is going to make a gain when you buy or sell it and close it out, um, you go ahead with it. If the option is going to make a loss, you simply walk away. Okay, from the transaction as a whole. So as we mentioned, this makes them really flexible and it means you get to enjoy some of the upside benefits if rates move in your favour, but it limits the downside um, movements if rates move against you. 
um, you will always be charged a fee, so there'll always be a premium um, to create that option, again, regardless of whether you actually take the option up or not. Now, probably the best way of, of doing this is to go through an example with you. It will look quite similar to um, the style of examples we've done before, um, and we're going to use um, Panda, which is the worked example on page 457 in your workbook. So you might want to just get that to hand. Don't work through the actual example. We'll be going through it as if it was a question. So just look at the requirement. That's all you need. Uh, but 457 in your workbook. Now, before we look at Panda specifically, um, what I want to do is just talk you through the calculation briefly. Now, the calculation for an option, for an interest rate option, is going to look pretty much identical, almost, to an interest rate future. So just like we do with interest rate futures, we need to start off by setting up the option. So there are a few bits of information and calculations that you need to do before you start doing the hedge. And I'll expect to see these kind of written down in the exam before you do your main calculation. There'll be marks available for it. Now, first of all, you need to decide which option date you want. There are often going to be several different dates given to you. Um, remember, they'll be for standardised points in the year. So they'll be for um, loans starting in March, June, September or December. We always choose the one that is the nearest after the date that our actual loan or our transaction is going to take place. You need to decide if you want an option to buy or an option to sell. Remember, an option to buy is a call, an option to sell is a put. So you'll need to decide which one of those two that you want. And again, we'll, we'll talk about that more in a second. You need to figure out the number of contracts you need. Interest rate options um, are contracted in exactly the same way as futures. So a £500,000 um, fixed amount of loan, and they last for three months. So that you can normally assume to be the same. Unless the question told you otherwise, just assume they've got those same terms as an interest rate future. And the other thing you need to identify is what we call the strike price. So in other words, what are we going to try and fix our interest rate at? Or put it another way, what is the current trading value of the option that you're going to use for your hedge? Okay. Now, again, they might not seem wonderfully clear, but just bear them in mind, and we'll try and show you how they work with Panda. Okay, so if you've got Panda on page 457 in front of you, you will need that. Let's just have a look at the requirement. Okay. Panda Limited wishes to borrow £4 million fixed rate in June for nine months, and it wishes to protect itself against rates rising above 6.75%. It's currently the 11th of May, and the spot rate is 6%, so that's the interest rate today. If you see the spot rate, it just means the interest rate at that particular date. So today's interest rate is 6%. The data is as follows. Short sterling options, so basically our options that we're looking for, um, £500,000, so that's that, that value that we said they always have, the normal value, will cover you for £500,000 of loan. And then we've got this rather disturbing looking table that has calls and puts with different strike prices and June, September and December across them. Now this is called um, a premium table and it lets us work out how much the bank is actually going to charge us. Um, however, we'll come back to that table. Okay, we'll show you how this works in a little bit. Panda negotiates the loan with the bank on the 12th of June when the £4 million loan rate um, is fixed for the full nine months and closes out the hedge. The requirement what will be the outcome of the hedge and the effective loan rate if the prices on the 12th of June are as follows? We're just going to look at case one to begin with. So let's say when we actually take the loan out, the spot interest rate is going to be 7.4% and the futures price, the futures are trading at 92.31 on the market. Okay. So how do we get this hedge to work using interest rate options. Remember what we said, what we have to do to begin with is set the option up. And we told you the things that we're looking for specifically. Okay. First of all, try and think which option date do you want. 
Now, in this case, we're only given information on June, September and December. OK, now we're told that we want to borrow on the 12th of June. So the nearest after that date, if you like, that's in June. So we should just be able to use um, June futures. OK, so we want the, the June options, if you like, in this case, the June um, figures. Next up, we need to decide if we are needing a put or a call option. Now, if this had been just pure futures, remember, we are looking to borrow money. So what we would have said is that we needed to sell futures today. So we need an option to sell. Option to sell is a put. Okay? So it's very similar to the futures that we did before. The only difference is we're basically just deciding whether to call that a put or a call. So because we're borrowing, we would be selling interest rate futures. So an option to sell those futures is a put option. How many contracts do we need? Well, this again is exactly the same as it would have been for the futures. Um, we have a £4 million loan. Each of these options is £500,000 in size. So we'd need, what, eight of them to cover the total amount. However, as with futures, they only last for three months. So because this loan apparently is going to run for nine months, we need three times as many contracts. So we'll need 24 in total. The final thing you needed to work out is the strike price. Now, basically, this is just trying to figure out what, what option you want to use um, to try and fix your interest rate. Okay. Now, in many questions, this will just be given to you. They'll just say, you know, that the current option price or the strike price or the futures price is blah today. However, it doesn't do that in this case. What it tells you is that we want to protect against rates rising above 6.75%. Now, have a look at the table that you are given, that premium table that we talked about before, with the calls and the puts and the June, September, December. Now, you'll notice the left-hand column has got a list of strike prices. So we're being given the option of three, or they're given the choice of three possible options here. Options trading at 93.25, 93.5 and 93.75. So the question is, which one of those three options do we wish to use? Now remember how options and futures are priced. It's 100 minus R. So if you have a look at the example again, the first bit, the first paragraph of the requirement, it said it wished to protect itself against rates rising above 6.75%. So that's the rate we're trying to fix at, 6.75%. So 100 minus that rate gives us 93.25. Okay, so of the three strike price options that you have there, we want the 93.25. That's trying to limit us to 6.75%. Okay, so slightly fiddly in this example, but just something to watch out for. Now, once you've done the setup, we can move on to the actual transaction itself and see how the hedge would work. So, now we've set it up, we can look at how it would work. Let's have a look at case one. So for case one, when we actually come and take out the loan, the interest rate at that date is 7.4% and the futures price is trading at 92.31. So, Remember, this is going to work very, very similarly to interest rate futures. First of all, we're just going to take out the loan that we need as normal at whatever the prevailing interest rate is on that date. So we're taking out a £4 million loan, and apparently the spot market interest rate at the date we take the loan out is 7.4%. Now again, remember, the rates will always be quoted annually. So we just need to be a little bit careful with this one because it is a nine month loan. So don't forget to pro rata it for nine twelfths to see how much interest we pay in total. So the total interest on the loan when you work it through would be £222,000. What we then have is our 
options. Just like the interest rate futures, they're done as a separate transaction. So we decided that we needed a put option before. So we had an option to sell and we would sell them at the strike price. Okay, so in other words, we decided that we wanted to try and fix at 6.75%, so we were going to sell today at that 93.25. Okay. To close the hedge out, what we would then need to do is buy it back again at whatever it's trading at on the date we take out the loan. Now that's given to us in case one, it says the futures price um, when we take the loan out, is going to be trading at 92.31. So we sold for 93.25, we buy back for 92.31, so that gives us a difference, not very much, of 0.94. And we interpret that the same way we did for the futures, it's a percentage per annum of the total amount that we have hedged. So it's 0.94% per annum difference between the two. And gains are good. We like gains. So all we would then do is multiply that back up um, to get the total gain for all of the contracts that we took out. We do that the same way we did for futures. So multiply it by the number of contracts, which is 24, times the contract size, which is 500,000. But then you have to pro rata for the fact these contracts only last for three months. So you have to multiply by three twelfths. So again, exactly the same as the interest rate futures. So we've made a gain of £28,200. Now again, watch out when you're kind of adding and deducting here. A gain is obviously income, which means we would set that off against the interest on the loan that we paid earlier. So that's why it's in there as a deduction against the interest. So, so far, pretty much identical to the interest rate future calculations that we've done. Just a couple of little tweaks. But there is one final thing that you need to be able to do. Remember, when it comes to an option, you always have to pay a premium. Okay, There'll always be a premium to pay. And you'll have to factor that in to your calculation. Now, have a look back at the premium table that you have. And let's see if we can figure out exactly what our premium cost is going to be. And um, We've actually got all the information that we need. First of all, we know that we were looking at a put option, okay? because we wanted the option to sell. So we need to be in the right-hand side. You see we've got calls for June, September and December, and then puts for June, September and December. So we want the puts side. And we know that we've gone for June puts, because that was when our loan was taken out. So we want the June puts column. And we also know our strike price, because we decided on this already, the strike price was 93.25. So if you combine those together, you read across the 93.25 row until you reach the June put, which is 0.14. Okay? So 0.14 is our premium that we're going to pay. Uh, 0.14 what? I hear you cry. Really annoyingly... It's 0.14% per pound hedged per annum, okay? And it's always going to be quoted in that way. Percentage per pound hedged per annum. Now, that might sound really fiddly, but actually it's relatively straightforward to put through, okay? What it means is our premium is going to be 0.14%. Watch your decimal places. This is point of a percent, so 0 0.0014 on your calculator times the number of contracts, times the size of the contract, so 24 times 500, just like we did before, and again, you have to multiply it by 3 twelfths, because even though the bank knows that it is 3 twelfths, it always quotes the percentages as an annual figure. So you basically have to kind of multiply it by the same three figures that you did for the gain, okay, to, um, to get to the right total. So the premium in this case is £4,200, all in. Now again, watch how you're doing this. That's a cost, so that's going to add on to your total interest cost, and then we deducted the gain. So what we end up with is £198,000. OK? 
Okay, that is our net position of interest. Again, you can then work out what the effective rate of interest is. So £198,000 of interest in total, um, divided by the £4 million loan itself. It's only a nine month bit of interest though, so to get an annual figure, you've got to gross it up by 12 over nine. So we end up with 6.6%. So that is our effective rate we've managed to get here, is 6.6%. Now the question is, why isn't it 6.75? Because remember, the strike price and the whole point of this calculation was to try and kind of fix our interest rate that we were going to use on this loan at 6.75%. That's why we used a strike price of 93.25. And... Um, there are a couple of reasons why you haven't actually got what you were after quite. You were nearly there, but not quite. Um, and some of these are the same reasons that we have with, um, with futures. We talked about futures imperfections, and um, options have similar problems. Partly the reason that we've got a difference is that there's a premium involved. Okay, So even if you are trying to fix at 6.75%, um, it's going to be distorted because you've got this wadge of premium that you're having to pay. And the other problem that we've got here is that there is some basis risk. The buyback price isn't at the right price. The market is wrong. There's some inefficiency here. Okay, We know from the scenario, from case one, that the spot market interest rate is 7.4%. Okay? That should mean that the futures would be trading at 100 minus 7.4%. So you should be looking at a price of about 92.6. However, the futures price is actually 92.31. So there's a little bit of a difference between 100 minus R and the actual um, futures market value. Um, so again, that's distorted the figures a little bit. So there are a couple of reasons there. Basis risk in the premium, and it just means it's not a perfect hedge. But it's, it's not bad. So that's case one. Like I say... Almost identical to an interest rate future, just with a couple of little twists. Now let's go on to have a look at case two. Okay, so still looking at Panda, we've got case two. Now we've set it up in exactly the same way as before. The only difference is that the spot market interest rate, when we come to take out the loan, has dropped significantly to 5.1%, and so the futures price is 94.75%. Now, you don't need to go back and kind of set it up again. You don't need to answer all the questions again um, because we've already done that. We've done the setup and we've got that to work. The only thing that's going to change here is the outcome of it because what happens on uh, the 12th of June when we take out the loan is going to be slightly different. So let's look at how the calculations would work this time. Now, remember, all we would do is we'd go out and take out the loan at the prevailing interest rate on that date. So this time we're taking out £4 million pounds worth of, of debt, but we're only going to have to pay 5.1% per annum. Again, remember to pro rata it because it's a nine-month loan, but that means the interest is only going to be £153,000. We've then got this option. Now, exactly the same as before, we've got the option with the strike price of 93.25. That's the one we chose because we wanted to kind of fix it at 6.75%. Um, so we sold at 93.25, just like we um, did in the last example. However, the futures price that we buy back at, because the interest rate is so low, is now 94.75. So we're selling for 93 and having to buy back for 94.75. So in actual fact, we're losing in this case for 1.5%. Now, if this was a future, that would be tough we would just have to lump it and take the loss and, and work out the total loss that we would suffer. But because this is an option, what this means is it's not financially advantageous to us to use the option. So all we do is we let the option lapse. We walk away from the option and therefore we end up with zero. <clears throat> okay? The selling and buyback thing is entirely cancelled and we end up with zero. 
So with futures, you can make losses, like we saw before, but with options, you cannot make a loss on the option. If it comes out as a negative number, don't even bother trying to gross it up, just make it zero. You let the option lapse. Okay, It's the whole point of an option. Now, unfortunately, you still have to pay the premium. But the good thing is the premium is exactly the same as it would be. That premium is going to sit there regardless of whether we let the option lapse or take it up. So we still pay the, the £4,200 that we did before. So what we end up with is 157200 So our effective rate, which again I've just worked out the same way as I did last time, comes in at 5.24% per annum. Now again, remember this isn't a future, so I suppose the question is, we were trying to get to or limit ourselves to 6.75%. Why isn't it 6.75%? Um, well, partly the premium, partly the basis risk, because again, there is a bit of a mismatch between the interest rate and the futures price. But actually, it's partly because it's an option. So the great thing about options is it limits any potential losses that we have. So if interest rates have risen like they did in case one, it limits the amount we can pay, but we are still able to enjoy some of the savings or some of the um, the positives if rates move in our favour. So there's a there's kind of a maximum cap on how much we can pay on our loan, but we are able to make significant savings if the rates drop, and that is the beauty of an option. Okay, uh, just to mention again, when you're working your way through your workbook you will find there's a section on index options. Um, these are basically like the index futures that we mentioned before. Um, they're options um, for if you're looking to buy or sell portfolios of shares. Um, again, background reading for you, not something that you're going to get specifically examined on um, in your semester two examination. So finally, what are the advantages and disadvantages of options compared to the other methods of hedging that we've looked at, like uh, futures and forwards? Uh, the main advantages, um, well, like the other two forms of hedging that we've looked at, options reduce your negative risk exposure. Maybe not perfectly, but they will normally limit any downsides very significantly. Okay, so they get rid of that kind of negative uncertainty um, about some of your cash flows. The other big advantage is that they are very, very flexible. You can make a gain if rates move in your favour, which isn't something that you see with futures or with forwards. The other way that they're flexible is if the underlying transaction is no longer needed, well, you can just let the option lapse. Okay, So if you take out an option on a loan, if you suddenly don't need the loan, just allow the, um, the option to lapse. Again, you'd still pay the premium, but you wouldn't have to take out a loan if you didn't want it. Um, the main disadvantage is, uh, really, it's all down to that expensive upfront premium. You're going to have to pay for the privilege of doing this, and that can make options significantly more expensive than other forms of hedging. Um, and in addition to that, it's really complicated to administer. So if you've not got um, an appropriate finance department with the skills that they need to do this, um, it can be really difficult, complex, and like we say, expensive to do.